Gather, friends, for we have a story to tell you. A story of great deeds. A story of the good and a story of the evil. A story of brave and a story of weak. A story that took place many, many moons ago when the knights ruled the land and a great king, King Arthur, ruled them from the palace at Camelot. This was a golden time for England and many daring deeds were done. The people of the fair land lived in peace and happiness while good King Arthur ruled. However, our story begins before this time, in the time when Arthur's father, King Uther, ruled as High King above all other kings. This was a dark and dangerous time in Britain. Saxons attacked again and again. King Uther and his lords fought many times. Uther married a beautiful lady, Agraine. And they had a son, Arthur. Frightened for the safety of his beloved baby son, Uther summoned unto him the legendary wizard, Merlin. Into Merlin's arms he placed his precious babe and bade him take him and keep him safe until the time that he would have to take his place as High King. Into the night Merlin crept and secretly made his way to the home of Sir Ector, a noble and honourable knight gave to him the babe and bade him to keep him safe to raise him as his own. Whose child is this I take into my home? Sir Ector questioned, but no reply would Merlin give. Take him for the love of me, he said, and into the night he disappeared. Many years have passed, and Uther and Igraine are with their God in heaven. All England is chaos and confusion. Who will now be High King? For none save Merlin knoweth the boy being raised in the countryside by good Sir Ector. Then, suddenly, appears an object in the yard of the great church of St Paul. A wondrous thing, a mysterious thing, a great rock, and in the great rock rests a jeweled sword. And stranger yet, the rock bears a message. Whosoever from this rock pulls the sword, the rightful High King of Britain shall he be. Oh, oh, All the knights, lords, and local kings pulled and tugged at the sword, but none from the stone could it remove. Once again, they fell to arguing amongst themselves, but amidst them did appear Merlin. The rightful king will appear, rest peacefully, quoth he. Into our story now comes our hero, dressed as a humble page, with those he considers as his family. Sir Ector's son, Sir Kay, is come to London to take part in the great tournament, and Arthur is his page. One day, Arthur is in trouble. Where is my sword? demands Kay. I will run and fetch it, replies Arthur. To save his legs, Arthur a short cut takes and past the magic rock he runs. Spying the sword, he seizes it and races back to Kay. When Kay holds the sword aloft, all fall to their knees. It was not I pulled it, but my father's ward, said he. Arthur was then crowned as High King of Britain. Dain to start the land still, and to a magic lake did Merlin take the young king. As they stood, a wondrous thing occurred. The waters of the lake parted, and an arm appeared. In the hand glowed softly a marvellous sword. Take my magic sword, Excalibur, and use it. You will never be beaten when you use it. While you carry it, scabbard, never killed will you be. Take care. When you are done with it, return it to me. So Camelot went Arthur, and there he built his palace. Married he was to a lovely Guinevere, and around him he gathered the best and bravest of all knights of Britain to sit at his great round table. Long and hard they fought against the Saxons, and at last the land was at peace. All lived in harmony and happiness. Arthur's knights had ventured far and wide, rescuing those in peril giving aid to those in need and searching for the mysterious Holy Grail. Yet evil stalked the palace, hidden in a beloved knight, Sir Mordred.
Arthur's nephew, this evil man could not wait for Arthur to die and wanted to be king immediately. He paid an army and in his rebellion rose against his noble uncle. At Camelon the armies met and dreadful was the fight. At sunset the field was stained red with the blood of many men. To single combat Arthur challenged Mordred but lost was his magic scabbard. Long and hard they fought. Mordred, he was killed, but wounded unto death was Arthur. Arthur lay and waited for his death, and to his side he called the noble knight Sir Bedivere. Take Excalibur and return it to the lake, then return and tell me what you see. Away went Sir Bedivere, but he could not bear to throw away the beautiful sword. Instead, he secreted it under a bush. Back to Arthur he did go. Tell unto me what occurred, demanded Arthur. My lord, I flung the sword, and under the still waters did it sink, replied the knight. You lie, Bedivere, said Arthur. For the love of me, return and do as I asked. To the lake returned Sir Bedivere, and into the water he threw the sword. Out of the water rose an arm. It took the sword and sank into the deeps. Two queens appeared and took King Arthur to the magic isles of Avalon, where he sleeps still. He will one day awake to save his country again. <laughs>